the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, Cabinet Secretaries, Principal Secretaries, ladies and gentlemen, the motivation behind the development of these two systems was at the foundation driven by the need to digitalize, but more importantly, to increase coordination and efficiency. We found ourselves in a place that was heavily bureaucratic, but also manual. We were overwhelmed by the directives and we were unable to follow through on the implementation. And so we developed these two systems so that it would not be us who would be reporting on the implementation of the directives, but the responsibility would be left to process owners. In this case, the state departments. But also the visibility that that then would uh, present. Uh, providing um, uh, dashboards for cabinet secretaries to be able to appreciate the progress of implementation a dashboard for the deputy president, as well as a dashboard for the president. But we are also very sensitive to the cost efficiency uh, that, that we're faced with. And we said, why don't we engage our local ICT teams? So at the very onset, in conceptualizing, in strategizing, we ensure that we're working with our internal ICT teams, but also um, technical experts from the ICT authority as well as uh, the State Department of ICT. And so even as we thought through the process, as we thought through what could be possible, initially the intention was to give an honest work, to provide an honest work, but because of the, you know, the enthusiasm that we got from our internal ICT teams, the State Department of ICT, our ambition was raised. And we challenge ourselves to not only develop an online system, but really a state of the art that then could rival the likes of Microsoft. And so the deputy president, these two systems are not only robust, but can also be enhanced. Talking of data integrity, at the point of entering data, whether you're entering data to apply for your own travel as a PS, as a CS, that itself exhibits data integrity because it is information from the user. Now, this real-time data then can ultimately be used for decision-making by leadership. Why? Because then one is able to establish from a dashboard where the PSs or the CSs are traveling to, where are they spending most of their time, and if this is really impacting on their performances. And so it's real-time data, not entered by ourselves, but entered by, a, by the user. And that's why we talk of uh, data integrity. In the process, we had our learnings, but we also had insights that the system is able to establish the location of the directive. So we have a map of Kenya that is GPS enabled, and so one is able to establish the location where the presidential directive has been issued, number one, but also on which sector. So from the dashboard, the deputy president and the president are able to establish on which areas are we mostly issuing directives, on which sectors and where, which areas in terms of locations at a country level. But also the use of the dashboard to be able to see just from a pressing of a button, what is the status? Also, the system is able to data filter. So for example, you'd like to establish where the water projects or the most recent water projects have been launched. Then what you, what, you, what you need to type in is water projects. And you'll have a list of all the water projects that have been launched in the recent past. But also we said that because this, this this is ICT, and sometimes the system outages, it doesn't always work 100%. Mostly it may work at 90%, but not always 100%. So we decided to provide a online support, you know, a hotline number uh, where one is able to call and not only get help, but also get assistance and guidance. But I just wanted to share with you some numbers that we've been able to establish. Next. 
We had the system rolled out from the 1st of August so that we were able to deal with system issues. We didn't want to have the launch today and then have to deal with the system issues later. And so from the time that the two systems were rolled out or became operational, so far we have had 18 cabinet secretaries registered under 14s. We have 37 principal secretaries registered. We have 100 chairpersons, 70 CEOs, total registered users is at 225, and a total of 122 travel applications have been processed in the last one month. And you'll see there's greater motivation on the 14s as opposed to the PDMIS. Next slide. On the PDMIS, so far, we have one cabinet secretary registered. And this is where the rubber meets the road. This is where we really need to report progress. And so following this launch, we'd like to encourage state departments to fully register so that they can be able to establish what are the directives that we are responsible for and what is the status of, of the implementation. And so the numbers are there. So far, from the time the president was installed in September 2022, 948 directives have been issued. If we were to look at the last three weeks, we probably, we'll probably get to 1,000 directives. We have all of them on record, scanned, and details entered into the system. And so, one is able to establish which directives touches on which pillar. And agriculture, you can already see where progress has been made. And so that takes you across all the pillars of the plan. Where are we pronouncing ourselves the most? And then this then can be used for decision making. Deputy President, there's a team that has worked on this diligently. There's a team led by director, our director of programs, our director of M&E, and a group of very young people, Gen Zs, that are government staff. And I'd like to ask them to rise up so that they may be recognized. Please rise up so that you can be seen. Where is the director of M&E, Matthew? Director of programs. That team across there, that's the ICT team. It's made up of young professionals that are, that are energetic, innovative, and creative. And whatever it is that we want to do beyond this, this team is available. Next slide, please. Please, you may sit down. I'd like to call on to Director of M&E to speak to this last slide in terms of next steps. And then we'll hand over back to the Master of Ceremony to call the next speaker. Thank you very much.